Now, the next, the next connection that this congregation made was a new connection between religion and economics. Economics was no longer a part of a stewardship program every fall or whenever they had it. Economics was a much, was a much bigger entity for them. A new economy they knew was needed. And they knew that it needed to be one that de didn't depend on unlimited growth when there's a very limited creation. These congregations also began to understand, that is, accept responsibility for this, that they said, we can either help or hinder this new economy uh, as, it, as it tries to emerge. Uh, we don't have to wait for Ben Bernanke. We don't have to wait for the Treasury Department. We don't have to wait for those decision makers. We need to act now, because if we wait for them, in fact, they may find it they're so locked in the previous paradigm that they may just find it really impossible either to think this way or figure out how to get there, even if they are thinking this way. But we can think this way. We're small enough that we can figure out how to get that there. We are spiritually motivated to do it. Then also, the Bible began to be understood in a different way in this 2020 congregation. Uh, they began to see that that cosmology and economics in the Bible all, was always used to counter domination, empire, and the powers. And so they began to understand then how to use the Bible's cosmology and economics to understand differently uh, the, the economics that they wanted to bring, bring to pass in the world today, the new economy. Now, a 2020 congregation's new consciousness generates new excitement, which, of course, it always does. Anytime we have a new awareness of something, we're excited, we want to talk about it. And this excitement got generated because uh, they now realize that they could be engaged uh, very specifically and in a focused way in the two huge issues of the 21st century. The analogy that I'm hoping for is the one that I've already mentioned. That is that in this early 21st century, we will see congregations awaken to the degree uh, that they can interpret their, their, their discipleship, their mission, their ministry in terms of um, the new economy that's needed based on the great cosmological story that's happening. This is a congregation's great work, and it's a work of transformation. Historically, congregations have been proud of the fact that we're good at conversion. We know how about how to create conversion. Not talking about conversion from Jews to Christians or from, from Muslims to Jews or whatever kinds of, not between religious traditions, talking about how all the religious traditions work on the conversion to a new economy, embracing the new cosmology that scientists continue to give us. These are great turning points. So whatever, whatever change words you like to use, we're talking about change at the paradigm level. Our own hearts need to be changed. Our minds need to be changed to get there. But we also need to change lots and lots of structures from the human paradigm of domination to the revelatory paradigm of partnership. About a month ago, Thomas Berry died. He was in his 90s, a passionist priest who was also a bard of the new cosmology. He wrote a book called Our Great Work, Getting in Our Way Into the Future. And he talked about moving from the Cenozoic era that we're in to the Ecozoic era. Uh, so he saw this very grand story, and he said, human beings are the consciousness of the cosmos reflecting on itself. For the first time, the cosmos actually can be self-conscious in, in a whole different way than it ever was. And he said, we can participate in, a in this planetary phenomenon that's going on 